Just like you probably were, I was told in school that there are such things as viruses, which are super, super small sort of bacteria things, but, you know, really, really tiny, uh, that invade your cells and use your, the material of your cells to replicate themselves, and then they go, bloom, and then they invade 100 more cells. At my level of knowledge at the time, I found nothing particular to which would have led me to disagree with this explanation. Nowadays, I'm not so sure. You see, there are many, many problems with the theory of viruses, not the least of which is the extreme paucity of evidence that viruses actually exist. I was amazed about this. Um, there is almost no hard evidence I mean, you see pictures of mm, what are said to be viruses in uh, you know, textbooks or on the internet, but these are always pictures of dead material, and that this dead material is a virus which does what I was told in school it does. The connection is just a hypothesis. There's no proof at all. It's just a hypothesis. Something that somebody has thought out and said, well, it must do that, therefore that's a virus. That's not very scientific. And then we have this problem of so-called infectious diseases, for which we have to thank uh, Mr. Passer, on Mr. Koch, Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch. And both of them knew at the time that they used their influences to promote this theory that it wasn't true. And Louis Pasteur's professor, Pierre Bichamp, explained to him in detail why it's nonsense. It can't be work like that. Something much more sophisticated is happening. But at the time, Bichamp couldn't prove it because microscopy didn't allow him to see what was really going on. Robert Koch's colleagues proved to him in front of his old eyes that it's nonsense. But still, you know, the two of them decided for fame and fortune instead of truth and honesty. And that's the basis of the whole pharmaceutical industry. And the main earner nowadays for the pharmaceutical industry is vaccines. And vaccines are based upon the supposition that A, viruses exist, and B, they cause diseases. Now, both of these suppositions, there is no hard proof for them at all. In fact, it could very well be that viruses as such, as living entities, or as I say, as a sort of minuscule animal, I don't know, don't actually exist. That the way in which a disease, if you like, is communicated is not by a virus transferring from one person to the next. And simple medical statistics show that this is most unlikely. If we take, for example, the definition of an epidemic, and that is where a maximum of 4% of the people who theoretically come into contact with this disease-causing organism, a maximum of 4% actually get ill. That is, at least 96% are completely unaffected by it. Now, that alone blows a very large hole in the theory of infectious disease. What we do see, however, is some degree of carryover from one person to the next. And if we look at this more closely, we see that the people who, shall we say, do become infected, for want of a better word, they all have something in common. They're in the same family, 
they work together, they travel together. And so because they're in contact, it's quite easy for them to exchange information. Whereas someone with whom you have no normal contact whatsoever, it doesn't happen, which is why the actual spreading or vectoring of a disease is so narrow, maximum 4%. The information that's exchanged between people is very, very interesting because if we look at the work of Gaston Nesson, and it would not surprise me very greatly to learn that he was a reincarnation of Pierre Béchamp, because what he actually did was develop a completely new type of microscopy which enabled scientists to see much, much smaller things. In conventional microscopy, the maximum magnification you can get is two and a half thousand times, well, maybe 2,700, but that's it, top whack. And then there's a big jump until you get to the electron microscope, and in between, you can't see anything. And Nasson invented a way of seeing living material with up to 30,000 times magnification. And then he was able to see what Béchamp said was actually happening, what Béchamp theorised was happening. And what he saw completely eliminates the theory of viruses. What he saw was that if the help of a virus was necessary to eliminate a damaged cell, then the human body would create this virus from information already present. So a virus in its normal state is information. It's not a material thing. It's only converted into material if it's needed for bodily clearing and regeneration. Which brings me to the next discovery. There is a virus which infects almost exclusively political people. At the moment, Trump is very, very little perturbed by it because his background isn't politics, it's business. In politics, you get this virus which moves people towards promoting violence. And it's from this that wars happen. You see, nobody, absolutely nobody, actually wants war. They may think they want war, but what they're actually thinking of is a glorified picture of what they think war is. But if you look at what war actually is, nobody wants it. War is destruction for both. It's never been anything else, has it? OK, you might argue that the Romans <clears throat> used war of conquest to create an empire, but it destroyed their family structures, which led to the period of constant revolutions and the fall of the empire. Nowadays, this destruction happens in a much, much shorter time. So if you want a war, what you're asking for is your own destruction. Because of this virus, those in politics often feel that they have no recourse 
other than to promote war, violence. So what I'm going to do is to record a special transmission which very specifically eliminates this war virus. And I'm going to do it in a way so that you can take it up and pass it on to everybody. It won't harm people who haven't got the virus, but the people who have got the virus will finally be able to see a peaceful way. So, whether you look at the transmission and take it into yourself and then give it further, or whether you turn your back to your monitor and let it flow through you to everybody, but especially politicians, entirely up to you. But we need your help to f pass it on so it spreads. It's like a love virus, a peace virus, instead of a war virus. That's what we're doing. We're exchanging one set of information for another. And I wish us all enormous success with it. Thank you.